Hello farmers and welcome to the Kenyan farmer. Today I have a short video on a pest that is new to me. Okay, to be sincere, I've heard about it but never had a chance to see it. Pottery farming has its own fair share of challenges. I'm learning new stuff every day. Most people shy away from pottery farming because of the risks that come with the business. You take the best care for your chicken, like get quality chicks, give quality feeds, the most expensive, update your vaccination calendar, maintain high standards of sanitation, go to church every Sunday, pay taxes, and even greet your neighbor. But there is always that one surprise around the corner, especially for new farmers. Believe me, with experience, you will gradually feel more confident. Success is not for quitters. I keep on knocking on the door until it opens or breaks down altogether. For the last one week, I have had my chicken looking dull and pale, especially in the morning hours. Once I release them from the houses, they have this uncontrollable desire to spread their wings and legs on the sun. This is natural. Or is it? I can't still point out a single source of stress or disease. I decided to investigate deeper what is happening at night that is causing them to wake up in low spirits. I have noted a strange pest hiding in the chicken house. These oval, flat, bloodthirsty vampires, they are called fall ticks. Yeah, that's right, even chicken have ticks imagine. I have learned that this is a serious problem in hot, dry climates. These ticks hide in cracks and crevices on the housing at daytime, hiding in plain sight. Can't believe. Let me give you a brief profile of pottery tick. The oldest strategy of war preparedness is understanding how your enemy operates. I mean, if he comes to steal, kill and destroy, why expect anything good from him? Ticks are not insects. I mean they don't have six legs and three body parts as we learned in school. They are more related to spiders, I think. Fall ticks are not a big problem in commercial cage production. They can't hide. The egg will hatch in a month's time depending on ambient temperature. The larvae feed on blood meal. It can be found on the birds because they remain attached for about a week. The most weird fact on this stage is that it has six legs unlike the other later stages that have eight. The nymph molds several steps up to seven and feed on the same or different host. The adult female will lay about 500 eggs after each blood meal. Both the nymphs and the adults feed at night for around 30 minutes and then detach. You can spot the red marks on the skin where they puncture when they feed. As the ticks suck blood, they transmit a bacteria in the saliva. These bacteria cause a disease called avian spirochetosis. The disease has various symptoms that can be easily confused with other diseases. If you are keen, you can detect a drop in egg production, depression, anemia, recumbence, or birds that tend to lie down stretched, especially due to larvae infestations. What's my strategy of attack? I will target the three mobile stages. The larvae stage, which are full-time feeders, will be controlled by dusting the birds with the cabaret. The nymph and adult, which are part-time feeders, should be controlled with an acaricide. I will also remove and burn all the beddings. So get ready and let's go to the field. The first order of business is to thoroughly dust all the chicken. I am using a cabaret based insecticide powder. The idea is for the powder to get into the feathers 
and under the wings. Once I am done, I chase the birds out of the house. They will come back later in the evening. Being a sunny day, they can go out and sunbathe, or I should say sunbathe. The next thing is to dress well for the spray. Gloves, overall, boots, and other PPEs. I first put around 2 liters of water in the pump and then measure the required chemical for one pump. Finally, I fill up the pump. Today, I'm using a cypermethrin based acaricide, the same that you use to spray on cows to control ticks. I'm now set and ready for the activity. So, let's get inside and make it rain. While spraying, we target all the cracks or gaps on the cage. Complete wetting is essential. Take your time, do a good job. Ensure you maintain a high pressure on the pump by continuously pumping. Within no time, you may start seeing how the adults start walking out begging for mercy. But it's judgment day. It's too late. After like six hours, the chemicals on the wood surfaces will be dry. You bring in the fresh beddings for the laying nests and allow the chicken to come back for the evening. Today, I want to see if the treatment worked. I will do a random sampling on one corner. By the way, this exercise is crucial for most chemical applications in the farm. You revisit the area to evaluate the performance of the previous treatment. Check out my crop scouting videos and understand how it's done. From my sample of 8 ticks, 2 are survivors. After 12 hours, should I say that my method is 75% effective? I know mathematics guys out there are like, a sample of 8 from a population of 10,000 is not fair. Yeah, sue me. It's not perfect, but I can work with that. Anyways, I will repeat the treatment after a week to kill the next generation of larvae and any survivors. I hope you have learned something today. Remember to like, share and subscribe. If you benefit from my online content work, you can also donate something via PayPal. Thank you for watching. God bless you and see you in my next video.